Greetings, royal family, and welcome to another message by the Honorable Yudhe Wavhe Beit Noon Sophie. Yudhe Wavhe. Now, royal family, this message was taught many years ago by the Honorable Yudhe Wavhe and is being presented to you today by Yahweh's royal priesthood. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Visit us at Yahweh's royal priesthood. www.yahweh144 zero 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 dot com and also royal family join us at the university of yahweh where classes are designed for the godhead visit us at www.universityofyahweh.org also, Royal Family, listen to our weekly podcasts by the University of Yahweh, found on most podcast platforms. We look forward to you being there as well. Enjoy, Royal Family. So nationality means what? nation do you come from? That's what that means. Now when you ask all the people that are in America, all the people, all the people in America, their nationality, their skin can be black and they be from Africa or South America or Nicaragua or wherever, but they never say their nationality is black. They'll tell you what tribe they're from, the name of the land, they speak that. If you ask a man in America and say, well, what's your nationality? He says, I'm French American. And that means that, he said, what does that mean? Well, my forefathers are French. So, well, where do you come from? They say, France. We came from France. Well, who owes France? We do the Frenchmen. So what kind of name do you have? Pierre. So what kind of name is Pierre? It's a French name. So what kind of language do you speak? I speak English and Talibou Francais. Comme on Talibou Jou Doué. So he establishes and proves that if he has to leave America, he can go back to France. He has another man, say so what's your name? He says Kaufman. So what kind of name is that? He said German. Where are you from? Where are you? Germany. What kind of land do you speak? German. Oh. So what happened if the Indians get their land back in America? And <laughs> I go to Germany. I don't think they're going to get it back, but if they did, I'll go to Germany. That's where I'm from. We rule in Germany. My people still rule Germany right now. I'm somebody in America. Because I come from somebody. I can identify where I come from. Meet another man. His name is Gonzalez. Gonzalez? What kind of name is that? Spanish. What kind of language do you speak? Spanish. What kind of name is that? Spanish. Where are you from? Spain. Oh. Meet another man. So what's your name? Say Johnson. <laughs> Johnson? What kind of name is that? English. What you speak in English? Where are you from? England. Us white folks still rule England. Then you come up on another fella. Say, what's your name? You say, Johnson. <laughs> His nose is thick, lips thick, woolly hair. Say, Johnson, where are you from? <laughs> you trying to be funny? Man, I'm from America. From America, that's where I'm from. <laughs> Well, all these other people got English names. They from England. Well, I'm from America. 
<laughs> well, how'd you get your name Jackson? Well, my grandmother told me I got it from the plantation slave master. So are you still a slave? I'm free. Well, why you still got Johnson's name? Trying to be funny, man. What's it to a name? Well, everybody else on earth have a name that identifies the land they come from. God gave everybody some land on the earth. Do you speak Afro-American? No. Do you have an Afro-American name? No. Well, is Afro-America somewhere? Is it on the map anywhere? No. no. Well, why you got a name like Afro-American? Why you say that's your nationality when well, nobody, there's no place on the map to claim that? If the Indian take his land back, where are you going? Well, I guess I'll go back to Africa. Well, where? Who wants you? Where in Africa? So then the same question would be asked, well, you say your nationality is black, where is black land? Where's colored land? Where's Negro land? Who speaks Negro East? Who speaks colored East? Who speaks black East? Where's black land, colored land, Negro land? What does that tell us? We're without a knowledge of our history, culture, language, name, and land, and God, and that leaves us in America unequal to everybody else. Because everybody else can tell you where their fathers come from and can go straight to their land by their name. Their name identifies them. Now, if you say you're a Hebrew Israelite, then God gave you the land Israel. So why didn't we know God gave us the land Israel? Because we were cut off from the knowledge of who we are. And when you're cut off from the knowledge of who you are, then you don't know where to go and you can't stand as an equal to everybody else in the land. And when you can't stand as an equal, who wants you in their company? And then that causes us to want to look like other people, act like other people, and be accepted by other people rather than be accepted by yourself, on your own and among yourselves. The Japanese buy from Japanese in America. China, people come from China, they set up Little China. The Cubans came and set up Little Havana. The Mexicans come and they set up Little Mexico. And then they have their own senators, their own congressmen that look out for Mexicans. And that's good. Why don't we do it? As a people, we as Hebrew Israelites are. We are because we know that we're the nation of Israel. And that Israel is our last name. That we are Hebrew Israelite. So Hebrew is our language, Hebrew is our history, Hebrew is our culture. Our God is Hebrew, he speaks Hebrew, we speak Hebrew. Then as soon as we say that, everybody bows to us and confesses that it's true. Yep, we are, you are, yep, all the chosen people are right. Everybody admits it. And if there are enough civilians, you ask some people in nationality, they say, I'm Baptist. They don't know that Baptist is not a nationality. That's a, that's a denomination of the Christian religion. So that means that I have the most difficult job on the planet Earth. Come to a people who are totally mentally, spiritually destroyed. Absolutely profane in the worst sense have no regard or reverence for that which is holy, sacred, or divine. And as a result, they are cut off in their ignorance, and you can see it displayed equally all across America. Drug addicts, prostitutes, thieves, robbers, burglars, just sit around and wait on white people to hire us. If you have a job, you think about how to steal from the man that hired you. How can you go into business for yourself, steal it? Happy to stand around on a corner, under a tree, just sit around and drink wine, 
all day and use profanity. There's something wrong with the people like that, and yet I am sent to a people like that. A people who are totally destroyed, Jose 4 6. Read. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, Yutewafe, I will also forget thy children. Great, Yahweh. So here we have a situation that we have become a forgotten people by Yahweh. Why have we become a forgotten people? Because we forgot the law. When we forgot the law, we forgot our nationality. Why have we gone through a change um, we used to be writing down colored as a nationality. Then after so many years, we changed and we became Negro. We wrote down Negro for a nationality. Now some, here in these last few years, some are writing down Afro-American as a nationality. None of these are nationalities. These are proverbs and bywords. First Kings 9. Let's find out how this came about, that we start calling ourselves all these funny things. Who taught us to say that? Who taught us to say those things? Who taught us to say the wrong nationality? The slave owner taught you this. He took the knowledge from you. Read verse 5. Then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. Guess what? Now we thought Israel was white folks, Jews. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. So let's go to Revelation 3 9. Let's find out who Israel is and who Israel is not. When you find out who they're not, you'll know who they are. Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. Read. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. So there are those who say they're Jews and are liars. They're not. Well, if they're not, then who does the land Israel really belong to? See, somebody is out the knowledge of who Israel belongs to. Somebody is lost on the planet Earth. They've lost the knowledge of their nationality. They've lost the knowledge of their homeland. And so somebody is pretending to be you. To sit on your blessing. Notice here, back to 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 5, Yahweh said, I will establish the throne of your kingdom upon Israel forever. Forever means forever. <laughs> Eternity. As I have promised David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. Well, the Jews are not. Where is Israel? Somebody is. Everybody else knows who they are. Everybody else is in their land. Somebody has been taken from Israel and have lost the knowledge, have forgotten who they are. Huh? And when you ask them, who are you? What's your nationality? We say all kind of things. That's not true. And it can't be proven. You can't prove what you say. Every other nation can prove what they say, but you can't prove what you say. That means everybody on earth is wrong but you. You're the only right person on earth. Everybody should be without the knowledge of who they are, just like you. <laughs> Verse 6. 
read. But if ye shall at all turn from following me, ye or your children, and will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them. Hip is a preposition followed by a proposition. Here's a duality that has rewards. Here's a question and here's a statement saying if, here's a proposition, if you don't follow me, if you turn from me, something's getting ready to happen. If you go get other gods, something is going to happen to you. Let's read what would happen. Read. Then will I cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them. Now there it is. Cut off. Cut off from the land. Here's a group of people who was given the land Israel by Almighty God, Yahweh, who have started following other gods and are now what? Cut off from the land through the lack of knowledge. Don't know. And yet it's a gift by God. Read. And this house, which I have hallowed for my name, will I cast out of my sight. Israel is a house of people. You are a house. And you have been cast out of the sight of God. White folks didn't cast you out. Yahweh did. He used white people to do it. And then to make the knowledge of who you are a secret. Read. And Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. Now you have to look up the word proverb and byword to be smart. <clears throat> to be intelligent, you have to look up proverb and byword and study. You know what a proverb and a byword is? I'll tell you and then you go study. I did, so you study it. It means nicknames, false names, names of mockery like nigger. Color, Negro, Afro American, Lazarus, Monkey, Apes, anything strange, they call you that. Split, Shine, <laughs> Yeah, I heard all those names. Split. Become a split, man. Here comes Shine. <laughs> and they just laugh at us. Well, the word, the Bible said this would happen to the people who are Israel, the only people on earth who are called out of their names by false names, mockery names, degrading names, is the so-called black people of America. And since we're the only people who don't know where in the world we came from, you say Africa, where in Africa, man? Africa is a lot of countries. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot, so you have to admit, you don't know. Where? Don't know. You can't shut me up by talking. You have to tell me something. Back up what you're saying. If you don't know, you need somebody to teach you. And I'm the world's greatest teacher. Commit to the truth. See, people came and gave us religion, but they didn't give us their, our nationality. If you switch off and join Islam, you, you had to take on an Arab name. You know Arab. You're an Arab, you don't know all well. You don't get any royalty checks. King Saud is giving you nothing. How about you? you? I'm your brother. I'm a, I'm a Muslim. I believe in God. Whatever you want to say, you're not getting no all money. I bet you that. You get to remain poor. Then you give up your name. You, you know what you thought. They tell you right away. See, nigga ain't your name. You have to take a name like Muhammad, man. Ali or something. <laughs> <laughs> Proving that you're not a nigga. You know, you, you don't know what you are. Let me give you a name, at least you can say you're from over here somewhere. 
You don't know where, you can't say you're Arab, you don't own nothing over there. You don't own no sand or nothing. You don't own camels or goats or nothing. You don't even know how to cross the desert. Some of you say you walked across the hot burning sand, see, but you didn't know what you were talking about. I'm the man to teach you all about what that is. See, the cable tow wasn't for you. You didn't get walked across no desert 3,000 miles by no cable tow. White folks did when they got coming, when they were raised up out of Europe, put back on the road to civilization. They were causing hell and raising hell among our people. So we drove that sucker out, stripped him naked, gave him a loin cloth, put a rope around their neck, had him travel all the way across barefoot, across the burning hot sand. Sahara Desert, get out of here and on back in those rocks, hillsides and caves called here, the rope. I know the whole history. Yura means, Yura, E R means caves and hillside. Rope is what we used to take them across the desert with and then rope them in, bound them up for 2,000 years. That's why they went through what they called the, the dark ages. That's when the dogs became his best friend. But we had to civilize them. Because they were given 6,000 years to rule. And their time is up. I'm here now. It doesn't take but one man to change history. Read history and find out. It never took but one man to change history, and I'm the man to change all of history forever. I'm the one to divide time. I'm the man to set time in motion. There never was a time beyond time in which there was time that I have not existed. I've always been. I'm beyond time. See, they lied when they said the man 1900 years ago divided time and time started way out somewhere and came down to zero. BC, time started way out, they say. They don't know where it started, but if you know it, it goes down to zero, 2820 BC. I mean, how did you know it was going to be a zero? And who could be smart enough to start with infinity and work their way back to zero? <laughs> if man came from an eight, he would have to start at zero to work his way up. He could never be smart enough to start out at 10 million or 50 million and work his way back to zero. <laughs> and then start all over again at 1 AD. And it'd be 1987 since this man. So he couldn't possibly have divided time because nobody could start off like that. No man coming from an eight could start with infinity and work his way back to zero and know it's going to be zero. And say he divided time and time started all over again since him. Now it's 1,987 years since. And we're going to keep on going? No, he didn't divide time. The creator of time, the one who said, let there be light and time, is the only one who can divide time. And I'm the divider of time. And I have come to those who have been studying in secret and know that you have to be able to divide. And that's why when you look at the secret words, the passwords, like Boaz, you have to be able to approach and say, B-O. You got to divide it. Somebody else has to know A-Z. And the master then have to say, Boaz. I mean, that one who is coming, that is the supreme grandmaster, architect of the universe, who will be able to give you true division. And that's me. I'm here to divide time. 
set a true time in motion. I have the most difficult job. I take a profane man sitting in darkness and raise him 90 degrees. And then take my sisters, my daughters, who just as dark, and raise them to 90 degrees right along with him, and then cause her to submit to him. See, only God can do that. A woman knows much as you know, and you talk about rule over her, she ain't going for that. <laughs> she gets sassy. I know what you know. Don't let her make as much money as you make. Nigga, you can't tell me nothing. I work like you work. I make money like you. If you're going to be a man in your house, you better be making the money. <laughs> this is kind of quiet now. That's why some men used to keep them barefoot and pregnant. You just keep having babies. When you bring that bread home, son, she'll be listening. <laughs> See, there's no knowledge on earth that can lift you 90 degrees except God. Therefore, without me, no man is upright. He's heard about the knowledge. He knows about upright knowledge. See, when you become a builder and a master of the craft, you know that the only way you can be upright, perpendicular to the square, rectitudinal, is to be 90 degrees to the horizontal plane on which you lay in your dead state. And if you raise 32 degrees, you haven't made it yet. If you raise 33 degrees, so you're still freezing. You're one degree above freezing. 32 degrees is freezing. It's cold. That's immobile. You're not going nowhere. That cold. I'm the one to thaw you out. Stand you on up. I have the knowledge to do it. So the children that have sat in darkness are now seeing the great light. And that's me. That means that my people, the so-called black people of America, are the children of Hiram. We are the children of Hiram. Hiram was one of the chief architect builders of Solomon's temple, King Solomon's temple. Of course, you that I've raised know that. It's right here in the Bible. Why did the white masons put it in secret? The study and the knowledge of a black man's temple. Why did the white masons worship a black king?